Hello everyone, my name is Nathan Zimmerman and today I'd like to show off to you my MSP430 DAC GUI tool that I developed. I put a decent amount of time into this tool, created a lot of features that I find very useful and hopefully so will you. So what this video will be is a demonstration of the tool itself and its various features and how to set it up. And then I have my webcam here, which will be my visual aid. And then I also have, we can see it, the MSP430 launch pad right here. And then what will be even harder to see is this spy-based NRF 2.4 gigahertz wireless module that I have. I'll be showing off how I can use the tool to configure that, as well as my trusty Rigel DS1052E oscilloscope. So I'm just going to point my webcam, attempt to point it at the MSP430 launch pad. There we go, kind of. And then on the screen here, the primary screen, you can see the GUI itself. And the ideal principle behind this GUI is that I send ASCII commands over UART to the launch pad and the MSP430 microcontroller parses the commands and responds. For example, if I want to set port 1 pin 0 to a digital output, I can go to this tab and I can set it high and then on the webcam there, hopefully you'll see that the red LED is indeed on or I can turn it off and on, etc. as well as the green LED as well, which is on port one pin six. Basically, you have complete dynamic control of all of the microcontroller's GPIO functionality. Okay, not all of it, but most of it. And then, for example, to demonstrate the UART capacity, I am going to bring up a terminal program. First thing I need to know is what serial port my Launchpad is on, so if we go to devmanagement.msc, that brings up Device Manager. And as you can see, it's on port 60. So I'm going to go to my desktop and bring up my favorite serial program, which is PuTTY. And of course, it's COM60, and I have to use 9600 baud rate because I'm on the launchpad, which kind of sucks and only supports 9600. Anyhow, so if I send a whole bunch of garbage data, the launch pad, or more specifically, the MSP430 microcontroller on the launch pad echoes it. And if I hit enter, it'll parse the message and check whether or not it is valid. So if I send it a valid message, such as AT plus git underscore ADC, and I hit enter, voila, I get some ADC values. So that's how the... the device functions at a fundamental level, that's basically all it's doing is it's interpreting commands over the UART and once you hit the enter key, that is the escape sequence, it parses it and whether or not it's valid, it'll send you a response. And then what I did is I wrote this C Sharp GUI as a wrapper around this uh, command set that I developed. So, if I connect to the launch pad, well, this isn't a very good demonstration. My tool, it froze. There we go. Hopefully it won't do that for you. Anyhow, connect to the tool, fail to open port, make sure no other program is using the port. Looks like I didn't close PuTTY yet. There we go. And so you'll see all this data is populated, and you'll see this data log, and that's just the raw UART data being received right there. So if you look through this log, you can kind of get an idea of how the whole system works. And then as I mentioned before, most of the pins on here can be defined as a digital input or a digital output or an analog input. For example, I have port 1 pin 3 here, and currently it's reading about 2 volts which is indicating that it is floating about halfway between the positive and the negative rail. 
So if I define it as a digital input and put a pull up on it and I read the analog value of it, you can see that it is now close to 3.4 volts or close to the rail, which is, of course, 3.6 volts. Or likewise, if I put a pull down on it, now it's close to the, the lower rail, close to zero volts. Another feature that I have is I um, allow the capacity for you to set a resistor divider. Say I have a 1K over 1K, thus making a ratio of 1, I should see my voltage consequently double. Often you're trying to read voltages from a resistor divider, and this simply allows you to back calculate it. So that's that feature, and so you again, digital input, digital output, analog input, and then you also have your special functions, such as PWM. The MSP430G2553 basically allows you to have three hardware-based PWM pins. And so one of them is port 1 pin 6, which is attached to the green LED. So I'm going to turn off the red LED right here, and I'm going to enable this PWM on port 1 pin 6. And it says 16 kilohertz at 50% duty cycle. And if I reduce the duty cycle, you should see the LED get dimmer. Or if I increase the, uh, the duty cycle, of course, you should see it get brighter. And then it's fairly accurate, so that says 16.016 kilohertz. And then I'm going to set up my oscilloscope here. Bear with me for a sec as I do that. All right, now we're going to see if you can actually read the screen of the oscilloscope. Probably not, but it's worth an effort. So, yeah. That right there says 16.03 kilohertz, and you can see my wave there. And then if I increase the duty cycle of the wave, that of course should be reflected on the oscilloscope. So this has a range from, uh, let's see. I don't think it should be able to go all the way up to that. There we go. Uh, 8 megahertz all the way down to around 200 hertz. So it's quite a dynamic range, lots of resolution in the middle. So a pretty handy feature. Then another feature, as I mentioned before, that I had broken out is spy functionality. Often you want to develop on spy peripherals, such as the NRF wireless module. And then you want to test things on it, such as different baud rates or different spy and clock phase polarities. And normally you'd have to recompile your code every single time you want to change something. This, of course, allows you to do it all dynamically on the fly which can be incredibly useful. So I know from the data sheet that the SPI clock is active low, or sorry, its inactive state is low, and that the data is read on the rising edge. And then uh, 20 kilohertz for our baud rate, that should be fine. And then I'm gonna send it hex zero, hex zero, which should read the first register on the NRF module. I'm going to hit send a couple times, and as you can see, I read hex 8 back. I'm going to give you a view of the oscilloscope here, or attempt to. Hopefully, you can see that. I'm going to do a force trigger and then send data, and as you can see, it appears there on the oscilloscope. Pretty neat, right? And then, say for example, I want my clock to be an active high. Likewise, I could have my data read on the falling edge, and it all adjusts automatically as such. So, pretty handy. Um, <clears throat> and then, for an example of just showing that it's actually working, so right here I am reading from register zero. Now I know from the data sheet that if I add a hex offset of 20, that switches to write mode. So if I write 20 and 0 to the register, 
and then I go back to this, go back to reading it, I read back zero. Well, that's not very exciting. Let's write something else. Let's write four to the register. And then let us read that register. And what do you know? I receive four back because I have written that. So this allows for rapid pace peripheral development over the serial bus. Uh, so something I've always wanted to be able to do and I didn't see it out there. Consequently, of course, I wrote the tool for it. So that's most of the functionality of the tool itself. Now you're probably wondering how you set it up. So to get the tool, go to this right here, my GitHub account, uh, ICBM repository on GitHub, and then download the zip file for it. Take the zip file, bring it into your Code Composer workspace or wherever you want to, unzip it. And if you open it up, you should see the executable, which is the C Sharp GUI tool. Now, I've tested this on Windows 7. I can't guarantee that it'll work on XP, Vista, or Windows 8. Hopefully, it does, but again, no promises. So double click on that. The tool should open up. That's pretty simple. And then, of course, you need to load the code onto the MSP430 Launchpad itself. So, to do that, go back to the repository that you downloaded, and as you can see, here is the source code. So now let's open up Code Composer Studios. Let's make a new Code Composer Studio project. Name it something. I'm going to call it DAC Tool. And make sure that the processor that you have selected is, of course, the MSP 430G2553. Hit finish, and now we need to import that code into our project. So I'm going to go back to Windows Explorer. I'm going to go to the code. I am going to copy all of the code into my new project. So let's see, Control C, Control V. Yes, I want to replace everything. And then let's refresh our project for good measure. And as you can see, now we have all of the source code. And then one thing to note is that I have the external watch crystal soldered on, on, my, uh, on my launch pad. And so if I enable that define, it will consequently do a DCO calibration on the MSP430 launch pad uh, processor and give it a little bit better accuracy. So I would recommend uncommenting out that for your own if you're using this yourself. Then hit Control B to build. Wait for it to build. Take a little while. And with any luck, you will not get any errors. All right, so the build finished without any errors. Next, hit the debug icon. And with any luck, you should be able to flash the program to your MSP430 microcontroller. Hit play. Go back to the repo that you downloaded. Uh, bring up your DAC tool. Click on the launch pad on whatever port it is on your computer. Make sure you're using 9600 baud. Hit connect. And there you go the tool should now be working. If it's not, let me know and I will try to update the tool such that it does. Also, if there's any features that you want that this tool doesn't currently have, let me know and I can look into that as well. Anyhow, hope it's useful for you and thanks a lot as always for watching my videos. Talk to you later.